Hey guys, you ever wonder why the Nissan GTR beats so many sports cars out there? Or why the new video that just recently um, with the Lucid versus the Tesla Plaid and Tesla walked all over it? Or why a Bugatti Chiron, which cost millions and millions of dollars, is still not as fast as a Tesla Plaid model? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to another Talking Mods. Today's subject is actually going to be a little pretty, it's going to kind of get technical, but it's going to answer this question of why is my car that fast and what have I not done right? Because when you're modifying, it's all about balance. And a recent video, and actually the recent video which I just shot with the Tesla Plaid, if you guys remember it, it was a huge amount of explosion of power, speed, it was a lot of fun. And it made me think, well, how far have we come along in this technology? I'm gonna go into differentials, specifically what's the difference, why it's so important, and why a lot of us who are building our cars out seem to forget this step. So um, where does this all come from? I am the owner and CEO of Mod Bargains uh, for all your automotive needs, and especially in this topic, whether it's wheels, tires, you guys wanna get differentials, we are happy to help you. We have modification experts um, who know as much as me or more, um, and we are happy to help you guys out. But let's get into differentials. Now, uh, a differential is, what is it, right? And why is it not talked about? Why do we only talk about horsepower and all this stuff, but yet certain cars are a lot faster? And we, see, we saw this through the progression of time, and I'm gonna go through the time history real quick so that we can jump right through it. And then differentials start off with Ferdinand Porsche. So um, he started this back in 1932, um, this was actually started for the Volkswagens, um, especially in during the during the war after World War One. They noticed, hey, especially on the off-roading, there's a lot of issues that happen. So we came up with um, open differential and additional differentials, which I will explain the differences of each one. So if I'm getting too technical, I'm sorry. There is far more technical information. We'll try to put some links below if you guys are interested in going into it or guys give me in the comments and I'll try to explain them or create a different video for you guys. But again, this is just to get the basics. So we have technology that advances and we have our horsepower, our motors. Now, the motors, we had front wheel drive vehicles. We have rear wheel drive. Well, there was the, you know, the advantage of all wheel drive, getting the motor power all across to all different wheels. It's very important, right? But what happens if we're on a vehicle and we hit a puddle of water? One wheel hits that puddle of water. In an open differential, the wheels are supposed to spin together at the same time. Well, what ends up happening is the, all the torque, all the power that you have from your vehicle will go directly into the easiest spinning wheel. So the wheel that's hanging out in the air or on that ice or in that water will basically just get all that power and spin out and then you basically are not moving, all that power is lost. And that's what generally happens quite a bit, where we lose power. So in the traditional setup with, let's say Audi, everybody remembers when they really did well in the rallies. Rally now you have roads that are not even, and you have this all wheel drive, and a lot of people loved it. This was a set percentage of power going to front and to the rear. So it was a percent percentage, I don't remember exactly the percentage, I think it was like an 80-20, 80 to the rear, 20 to the front. Um, but you wanna get, when you have that power going to the front, you have the front wheel still being able to pull the car, right? Even if the, the rear wheel are not getting all that power, let's just say. Then you have advances that we've seen from Porsche, they did the limited, they did limited slip differentials, and I'll explain limited slip, front, rear. You have the WRXs, right? Great rally cars, all wheel drive vehicles, Again, they did a set power, um, set power. Then you had the Evos that were competing with it. And they had this, what's called a yaw control, where basically you could set how much power you wanted to go with it. And the most interesting one of them all was when the GTR V-Spec 2. Godzilla, you've probably seen it in Fast and Furious. One of my personal favorite cars. It had to be the V-Spec 2 because it had basically a power that would move from the rear and the front according to what was needed the computer would decide based on a bunch of algorithms, basically. Not algorithms, but also what it would feel off the tires. So Nissan was really advanced in that. And then you have 
the R35, right? So in the 90s, you had the R34 being the Godzilla, being the best of them all. It figured it all out. Could have been an amazing rally car as well, um, I believe, if they would have, but it didn't make sense financially. Anyway, then you have the vehicle, the R35, the new GTR, I think it's the R35, I don't remember what the chassis code is, but the new GTR that we currently have. What did they, they do? They transferred not only the power front and back, but from side to side, because that is a whole other issue that you have when you are in a turn. It's not just about going in a straight line, you're also in turning. Let's say you own a vehicle today and you want to modify it and you want to get that power down. A lot of vehicles today, and this is because of the way the manufacturers have gone about it, is trying to sit, they're trying to save money. And by the way they save money is by using computer system. So uh, you have anti-lock brakes, the ABS, you have what's called um, brake traction control. Now brake traction control is it's sensors, speed sensors, um, accelerometers, and it's basically controlling it. If you own a BMW, they call it DSC. So the computers are basically controlling, hey, they feel, hey, we're not getting enough grip, send a little more torque this way, whatever. Accelerate harder here, try to push it out if you can, you know, try to push it on this wheel. So they're controlling the wheels using a computer rather than a manual differential. It works. It's not a bad system, it's just traction control. And it works in terms of efficiency because you don't need to build a full differential, which is mechanical gears and pinions. And it's pretty expensive and they're trying to save their cost. But you don't get the best power out of it, especially in the older technologies that we've seen. So what ends up happening is you guys, not you guys, but just people in general um, and our clients, and this, this is something I always advise, we build these amazing cars that can produce very efficient type of horsepower numbers. And we're trying to get to a certain point. And what we end up seeing is, okay, we can't get all that power down. We want to get that power down and launching the way the Tesla is launching, the way the GTR launches, which is ex ex extremely fun. And you know, rib, they call it rib crushing acceleration. Or as I said in the plaid, it was more than rib crushing, I felt my spine, uh, spine crushing because I could feel my spine against the seat so hard. The main goal is to get our power down. And the power is whether we're in drifting, whether we are driving um, off-road, whether we are in a truck. Oh, he wants to go off-road! And um, we are in terrain that needs, you know, whether we're on sand, we're climbing. All of the, these are factors in which how do we control to get all the power down and move the car accordingly rather than just have the wheels feel freely spin and off-roading gets a little more complex because we have you know sometimes we have two wheels one on both sides especially when you're climbing rocks and so forth and it can get far more complex so let me explain the differences in the differentials and i'll go into exactly why tesla is so fast Okay guys, so as I explain the differentials, I want you guys to understand that I'm not going into depth. If you guys wanna go into depth, we can, um, but I'm gonna explain it in a quick manner so that it's you have the basic knowledge because I think most of us just need the basic knowledge in order to pick the right part for our vehicle. So um, if you're off-roading, um, what's called center locking, uh, locking the differential, we basically are distributing the power 50-50 at all times. We can do that also with the front, especially if we have all-wheel drive, we have low range, we have uh, what's called 4L. Um, again, we're distributing power accordingly, sending it into the transfer case, and it's going out accordingly. So we have that those different options. But let's go into limited slip into in terms of vehicles and cars. So we're using what's called clutch packs to control it. Now, limited slips are basically, there's a one-way, two-way, and three-way. Again, it's about distributing the wheels to get all traction on the wheels. Now, the difference between a one-way is during high load, it's very effective in a straight line. It doesn't do anything for you during deacceleration. That makes a difference also when you're cornering because acceleration, especially during turning, uh, you got to control it. You got to wait until you get to that point and then accelerate accordingly. A 1.5 is a little bit different. Um, so a straight line is going to be a one-way limited slip, and again, this is a mechanical, okay? A one-way limited slip is something that you'd find on your Mazda Miata. They do come with it. Not all, a lot of modern-day sports cars do not come with it, so. But the 1.5-way is basically full load all the way, and then half the, the amount of power during the acceleration controlled. 
And then there is the best, and I think, in limited slip, which is a two-way. It's basically 100% effective in both acceleration and deacceleration. Now, another one that is often available in cars and is used now by manufacturers, especially when they develop sports cars, is they'll put in a viscous slip. Now, the viscous slip uses a multi-plate clutch, just like the other one, but they add in a ton of oil, basically. It's basically bathed in a very thick type of oil, hence the name viscous. Uh, uh, it's a viscous fluid, viscous LSD. Um, basically, it creates less friction, so you don't hear the chatter that you hear sometimes for these cars, and it's for a lot smoother. The bad side of it, and now, by the way, if you're wondering what car comes with it, the 370Z limited slip is a viscous slip. But if you're wondering, why would I want not want a viscous slip? Because they start to overheat over time. So if you were drifting with that, you could easily break your differential and overheat it. And that's one of the problems with it, right? So another one that's used, especially in muscle cars, is what's called torsion helical limited slip. Now this uses what's called worm gears. It's basically another gear uh, setup. And it has really good response, low maintenances, uh, you use it in a Ford Mustang. So, which one's the best for you? Kind of confusing, right? A lot of different options. Uh, traditionally, if you are racing and you are doing circuit type racing, obviously the two-way is the best way to go. It, it depends also on how the car is set up. Is it a rear wheel drive, front wheel drive? Um, we'll put some graphics up with a link for it if you guys want, and you can kind of pick your application. Uh, just a general general guideline on how to pick it. So how does Tesla overcome all of this? Especially what I'm about to tell you, they use the cheapest method or the, not the cheapest method, but at least the, the first fundamental method, an open diff. Tesla uses an open diff. Why would they do that? Because it's the most reliable differential um, and it's also the simplest. I'll explain. I talked about before how manufacturers are using brake traction control, right? Um, in order to control um, the vehicles, the energy that it uses, it brakes here, it sends the power accordingly. Well, Tesla uses quite a bit of more technology. Now, understand that a Tesla horsepower, the battery power that comes off of it, um, is directly sent right into its induction motor. It's not a normal motor. Our motors, in terms of a gas-powered vehicle, have a ton of gears. The more gears that we have, the more loss of power that ends up happening. The more times we're transferring energy from one thing to another, the more energy is lost. And it's about efficiency. How do we maintain that energy? So as it we, we lose that, you know, we have now gearing. We have to, you know, first gear, second gear, so, so forth. The Tesla doesn't have any gears. It's one gear. All electric vehicles have an immediate power source that comes off their battery, and they only need to use one gear. So they use an open differential, and they have basically a software that they have worked on continuously. So they use what's called torque vectoring. Uh, they basically measure how each tire is going to grip on the road. Uh, they adjust the torque hundreds of times per second. Not one time per second, hundreds of times per second. As the car is moving, it is constantly readjusting the amount of power that it sends. So it can constantly keep on adjusting and the power will continuously come come on it's not the tires it's not anything else but it's that and that's what makes it consistent every single time you go through the drag the tesla is walking all over everybody and that's where the genius of the software is the genius of the software that they have i give them kudos because they have basically put together almost a perfect software system to control the differential across the board without using a manual system so does it work? Heck yeah, it works. Will you slip? No, you won't. Even in, in snow, off-roading. And this means that when this Tesla Cybertruck comes out, it will be a probably an amazing off-roader that can handle all types of terrains. Um, Tesla's handle really well in the snow. Tesla's can handle all types of situation, whether the vehicle, like even on three wheels, if you were to put the car on, obviously not four wheels, but on three wheels, let's say they were all in the air, they could still get the car moving forward and adjusted, which is incredible and kind of unheard of when you really think about it. So again, pretty amazing, awesome tricks that are being used. Now you're wondering how do they also do it during launches? Well, they also do a special little technique that they don't talk about, 
but they actually reduce the front squat, especially when you do the traction control, they actually reduce the squat a little bit. And then they do what's called preloading the front axle. Basically think of it like a slingshot. They already have the torque ready on, on demand. So when you watch that video that, I, that, I, that happened where it was just this explosion of power and I'm being launched into my seat, it wasn't this spool up of torque. There was already torque there and basically like a slingshot. Just released it and boom, the car goes. So Tesla is employing really amazing tricks. It's interesting to see this now um, in the off-road. So we, we see Rivian doing amazing uh, performances on the off-road section. I know that a lot of Tesla engineers have gone over there, but this took many, many, many years of developing, fine-tuning the software, getting it to finally, you know, send that information out accordingly. So anyway, guys, I know I didn't go too far in depth, but let me know what you guys think. Was this interesting? And guys, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do so. It really helps out this channel in growing it. And guys, I will see you on the next Talking Mods.